This article comes to us from Ars Technica. LastPass says employee's home computer was hacked and corporate vault taken. So as if things weren't bad enough for LastPass, an attacker was able to hack into an employee's computer. They stole credentials, I think, from a senior DevOps engineer, and they got access to <laughs> encryption and decryption keys, database backups, basically all the contents of this corporate data vault, which is so fun. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, we, we have covered the LastPass breach in multiple episodes, and I don't want to beat a dead horse on this and keep going into it. Um, what are you but, doing with that baseball bat, Don? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Last time we covered it, you'll probably remember me saying something like, just when you thought it couldn't get worse for LastPass, <laughs> it gets worse. Well... It got even more worse even in this worse. latest one. I feel one. like two years from now we're going to be doing an article. Remember LastPass and how I had that bad breach? They're back in the news. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I actually can't imagine it getting much worse than where it's at right now because we're finally getting some real details on what actually happened. And the story is bizarre, right? When, when I look at Internet services, services like PayPal, I'm always shocked that PayPal has been in business for over 20 years. That's crazy. And hasn't had a, a breach that affected its financial systems. Like, that's amazing, yeah. that kind of track record. But they're very security conscious. They do financial transactions, so they're very focused on that. LastPass, being a security company, you think would be focused on the utmost security. But this is a textbook case of not practicing what you preach mm. and you know creating rules and guidelines for other people and not applying them to yourself so it turns out that one of their engineers and and so you said just a devops engineer right so th this is not some random engineer so this is like one of the top employees in the organization i think he was one of only four one of access. four people that had access to this s3 yeah. bucket yeah. yes and so like i mean that that's a a high level employee somebody who is important in the organizational structure for uh, not, not like you right <laughs> right right well you know once you get high enough you right. get to ceos who have no access yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, can't, we can't give you access yeah but uh uh but this is this is definitely somebody who should know better yeah right who was using their home computer, so not a company-issued machine, using a home computer and unlocking the sensitive, secret, corporate vault for LastPass. Now, just doing that is, is kind of bad in its own way, right? Because your home computer is not secured to the same level as your work computer. But what made this worse was that when the LastPass breach happened, the attackers found out about this person. They knew this person existed because they had the company details, the company employee details. So they were able to target this individual specifically. On the person's home computer, they had Plex. Plex, the media server that we've talked about numerous times. I'm a huge yeah. Plex user. Oh, I, I love it. I use it every day. I, I don't have it installed on my own workstation. I have it running on a little server. But, yeah, I don't uh, know why you would have it on your, like, I, your, yeah, he, your working computer that you use. You he, build a little server and let it do the work. He had it installed locally, and uh, uh, Plex had a breach yep. that affected their user database. And it's kind of easy to draw some dots here or draw lines between the dots to say the attackers knew about this person as an employee of LastPass. They found credentials from breaching another website, and they were able to exploit a remote code execution in Plex to be able to gain access and effectively control this person's machine. They installed a keylogger. And the next time that DevOps engineer did their MFA authentication and unlocked the corporate vault, the attackers were in. And so they now had access to all the deep secrets that they needed to be able to access LastPass's infrastructure, and they could basically do whatever they wanted. And they proceeded to do that for quite some time without being noticed because they had legit credentials at that point. And so it, it didn't show up in the logs. Well, it did. They just looked like normal access. And that's where we end up today. Yeah, that's always fun because when they gain access to your system and they have full access as you, and this is what makes security really hard, everything you do looks like it's something that you are doing, mm -hmm. right? The log doesn't really betray like this was some random thing that came out of nowhere with some random user. Nope, it was you. You accessed it. It looks like normal activity that you would do. So it's really difficult to kind of find that needle in that haystack because it's really a needle in a stack of needles. Yeah. Mm. Yep. So from basically August 12th to August 26th, the attackers were focused on getting these credentials. They did get them. Uh, they gained access to the company backups and, and exfiltrated those. And so it's it's 
you know, Don, we we were talking about this before the before the show started, and it seems like you know if you're looking at the timeline of the last pass debacle, as yeah. we'll call it, right? You see some very pointed trade craft going against LastPass. And obviously, this is not some random hacker out in the wild going, hey, I found some access to LastPass. Let's go in there and pilfer their pockets and, and have a good time. It continued to have m- many stages, very uh, specific things that they would go after. Obviously, this person is one of four. How many employees are at LastPass, right? Mm. Probably more than you know five. So the odds were low that if they randomly had access through someone's Plex system through a breach that they had, oh, well, now I'm in the last pass. And then uh, it just so happens all this other last pass horribleness is occurring at the close to around the same time. I don't think it's a logical leap to say, you know, this is a very pointed, intelligent attack for a specific reason that we probably don't know about yet and won't learn about until a little mm. bit. Will we have another day, Jay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we'll just be like, "Welcome it. to our last pass segment." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just make yeah. it a, a regular, recurring thing. So you know, at our at our day job, yeah, um, I oversee technology for the organization, and and we have our corporate technology team that runs our Microsoft 365 environment, and and because a lot of what we use is web based, things like. Salesforce and Office 365 is web-based, right? People can go to their home computer and log into these systems and use it, right? And and how do we how do we stop that? It, it's actually kind of a cat and mouse game to try and stop people from using their home computers. And I, I battle that all the time, but that's much lower risk than LastPass, a security company, and they, you know, to to know that their highest level employees are using home computers with unsanctioned software and, and accessing it like that just really undermines the the trust we can have in that kind of a company so uh, there are some people out there saying you know we should stick with LastPass, give them a chance anybody could get hacked you know if you switch to one password one password could get hacked next year but this stuff to me looks like just willful disregard of mm. security best practices yeah when you're using you know the uh, the cipher isn't strong enough Right, the iterations that they use to, to uh, rehash, you know, rehash the thing, so that it actually, yes, is, that whole iteration right, mess, like that, that right there, that alone should have been like, why are you so far beyond behind your competitors on being able to encrypt these things in, in a safe and usable way? It doesn't make any sense. Just do the thing, and that right there should make one of people go, well, if they're if they're gonna drag their feet and kind of get lazy on the encryption that they're using. Well, then I'll just go do somebody else. Bitwarden looks like it's got a nice thing going on. What's happening there? You know, they are doing, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of iterations of the same cipher. So, yeah. you know, um, one criticism we, we talked about this in the earlier episode was that uh, their default number of iterations was 100,100. Yeah. But like my personal account was nowhere near that. Yeah, it was like it, four. Yeah, it, was, it was ridiculous. <laughs> it was 5,000 something. Yeah, you know, it, it, was it was super low. low. Number. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the uh, OWASP folks came out and said, you know, it should be 600,000. Right. And, you know, significantly higher. Well, LastPass sent a letter out to people who were affected. I actually got this as a user and as a uh, an admin uh, saying that, yeah, you know, now, now we recommend you go to 600,000. And for new users starting today, it'll be 600,000. You should tell your users to change it to 600,000 as well. Or you can just do it for me. Yeah, and and I get that they don't have our passwords on their system, so they can't go and just change it there. Right. But they could push an update to their plugin or, right. or their app or whatever on your desktop so that the next time you unlock, that when it relocks, it goes ahead and, and bumps the iteration. They could do it. So they're still not putting in that effort. I don't understand what's going on. Yeah, weird. Every time we talk about LastPass, because obviously they're now like kind of like the black sheep of password oh, managers yeah. now, but every time we talk about them, there's a little part of me that, I mean, because they've got so many employees. You know there are those employees that were just, they were following directions, they were doing what they were supposed to do, and now it's like... What is this, the they, Nuremberg like trials? They're, they're, yeah. like, oh, yeah. man. It's just following yeah. orders. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, oh, crap. Not, you know, now you've got this big target on your back. Like, yeah. <laughs> now, oh, you're one of those last pass guys? Yeah. Hmm. I do wonder... Let's take this lead engineer, right? Yeah. So one of four people have access to the S3 bucket. I, I looked it up. Apparently, LastPass has over 550 employees. Okay. So, I mean, you know, four people of 550, that's a that's a top person. Yeah. Um, I wonder if they had a policy 
that said you're not allowed to use your home computer, right? I think they would. So let, let's assume that they did for a minute. Okay. And this guy did use his home computer. So what is the right next step of action? Is it criminal charges against that employee for being negligent? That's a good question. I don't know. I mean, this this led to a pretty significant breach. I guess, hang on. I got to back up. It right would be here. civil Violating charges, company right? policy is, is not, not a criminal. Crime. Crime. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. It would be civil actions for like loss. They would have to sue him for loss, mm. defamation, you know. But uh, if I were him, my first defense would be like, this is a security company. They didn't stop me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I highly doubt that. I mean, I don't know anything about their internal structure, but I highly doubt LastPass participates in bring your own device. So I would have to assume that that's part of their policy, right? Like, I mean, don't... Can, can we do things like um, where you can define which devices are allowed to log into these systems and which not through some sort of like either third party or maybe Microsoft or whatever. Yeah. You know, so, so back when, back when people worked in the office, yeah. you could do IP restrictions and that right. was nice. But once work from home started, it became a nightmare. And so the, the best thing to do is to control it with a VPN, right? Mm. To say like, I'm going to authorize the IP address of our headquarters. Right, or wherever then you go VPN back to the whole IP is. control. Yeah. Yep. And then, you know, you control who your VPN client gets deployed to only to company issued machines with the right certificate. Right. Uh, so now they can go home with their company machine. It VPNs in back to headquarters and now they can access the S3 vault and so on. Uh, we actually do that with ours. Like when I'm at home, I can't, I can't even, I mean, I can, I can log in to the AWS account, but I can't do anything. Like it won't yeah. even render the the control panel for me. Nice. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Cause it, I'm not, my IP address doesn't match what's here. So, right. you know, that's, that's the kind of stuff that you would assume a company like LastPass would be doing. Well, you know, they say happens when you assume. You're yeah. right every time. Every single time. <laughs> every single time. You are always right. If you enjoyed that segment, be sure to check out our entire podcast available in the playlist right here. And you can always subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech news and other happenings in the IT world. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes. I hope to see you there. <laughs>